Hey, Greg Silva here. This is the uh, second follow-up video for the instructor training. Today, we're gonna to talk a lot about class management and just getting our class disciplined, make sure all the students are listening without lecturing them, without disciplining, without handing off push-ups, just by making sure that they're uh, focused on what you're saying and they have a response to what you're saying. Uh, this, in addition to be good, in, good for control, is really good for to instill life skills. Uh, so if they're talking about not giving up, and then you say, you guys ready to give up? And they go, no, sir, we're going to step it up. Well, it's a good positive attitude for them to respond. This is a kind of like um, we are pulling the best out of your students. You're not forcing them, them to do something. You're not pushing them to do something. Just by asking the question, you're getting good behavior. You're getting good focus. So I probably have 13 to 14 of these uh, call and responses. I'm sure you've heard them before. You've seen other schools doing them before. I don't know if schools use them enough. And I don't know if they uh, require uh, the students to be really performing and really yelling and really showing best behavior. Uh, this is one of those things that just takes practice, practice, practice for you to get the results. But when you start getting the results and you go, hey guys, lock it up, and you have 15 little dragons go, lock it up, sir, and they all sit down, I mean, that's a beautiful thing. You know, all these kids all at the same time sit down, and parents are gonna look at it and they go, I can't get one child to sit down, and here's this instructor getting 15, 20 kids to respond at the same time. Martial arts is amazing. So we're gonna go a few, I'm gonna explain them how I would use them in class. Uh, you probably gonna want a pen and paper to write these down. First one is goals we set. Students yield back our goals we get. So anytime you're doing something in class and all of a sudden you can set a goal to do something, goals we set, and they're gonna yield back goals we get. So when we teach martial arts, we're teaching about goal setting. If you're doing stripe testing, if you're doing belt testing, those are all goals we set for the students. And they have to know that we're not going to just set a goal and let it stand by. We're going to set a goal and we're going to work at it. We're going to work at it. We may have to try again. We may fail. We have to have persistence. But if we keep working, we're going to get that goal. So when you say, okay, we're going to do 20 push-ups push today, goals we set, and they yield back our goals we get. Now they're not going to give up. You have all kinds of lessons to talk about throughout all those push-ups to make sure they accomplish that goal. And that's just... Um, reinforcing their belief that goals we set are goals we get. Next one's real simple. There's a couple of easy ones. This is just to grab attention. Uh, students may be talking, may be having them practice. Now they're getting a little off focus. They're fooling around. It's getting a little bit loud. Um, they're not training as hard as you want. You just have to go, set! As soon as you say set, everyone brings their feet together, hands aside, and goes, sir! And all of a sudden, now they're looking at you. Same thing if you say, eyes on who, and then all the students yell back, eyes on you. They stop everything what they're doing. They turn around, they face you. Their eyes are on your ears, your eyes like laser beams. It's really showing them how to get self-control. But again, just to reiterate, we're not disciplining the kids on any of these. We're pulling the best out of them. We just say it, they do it, they say it with enthusiasm. Now, if you're trying these in class for the first time, I would start introducing maybe one a week, one every other week, because um, you want them to do full performance. So if I say set and they go, sir, that's not it. That's not a level of discipline I want. When we start thinking of behavior, we have white belt behavior and black belt behavior. Our white belts don't have to be black belts to have black belt behavior. And you have to explain that to them. When I say set and you slap your hands to your side and you sell sir, you yell sir, you can be just as loud, just as fast as a black belt. So I'm really looking for black belt performance. So then you try it again and they go, sir, hey, that was green belt. I know you guys can do better. I expect better. Again, I expect my white belts to act like black belts. So when you yell out that sir, it's gotta be loud and strong. Let's try it again. So you're just practicing and you're looking for best behavior. Uh, this one I really like at the beginning of class. Are you ready? And they go, let's train. I like that because it's a different type of attitude. First time I saw this in a class, Roland Osborne was doing it. They yell, let's train. And I'm thinking, parents watching this just saw Roland bring up level of enthusiasm from a one to a 10. 
A lot of these parents may be thinking, you know, I've got his older brother at home. He's been locked in his bedroom now for uh, six months. I wish he had that type of enthusiasm. So it's really important, let's train. It's not we're practicing karate. Are you ready? Yeah, it's time to practice. No, we're gonna train. There's uh, effort into this, there's energy into this. Let's train, love that one. This one's a real good one. Are you ready for challenge? They're gonna go bring it on. So it's not, are you ready to do a thousand roundhouse kicks? You can say, are you ready for challenge? Everyone's ready for a challenge. That shows their positive attitude. You know, in martial arts, they look to bring out the best in themselves. And so, again, when you say, are you ready for a challenge? They're going to go, no, no, I'm, I'm too weak for that. You want them to train to think like, yeah, I'm ready for that challenge. Bring it on. Positive attitude. So they have to say it loud and strong. You're doing a couple push-ups. Maybe, again, again, goals we set. And they go, goals we get. And then you're going along and they're getting tired. You guys getting tired? Uh -huh. Do you want to give up? And they're going to go, nope, I'm going to step it up. So they may be getting tired, and that's all right. It's all right to get tired. It's all right to want to give up. But if you have that black belt attitude, even as a white belt, you're not going to uh, give up. You're going to step it up. You're going to turn it up. So it's a real good one. Are you going to give up? No, I'm going to step it up. So you just say that to students, and they come back. And, of course, it's loud and strong. This one I, I think is really, really good for teens and adults, also good for kids. Habits we train. Habits we gain. So if we train good low horse stances, we train fast, we train powerful. Well, habits we train are habits we gain. So when we're talking to adults, you're talking about, okay, got to get that pivot. You got to get that hip into it. Got to get shoulder into it. Pivot that foot. Whatever you're going to do. So these are really good habits we're working on today. And habits we train are habits we gain. So they yell that back to you. Start strong, end strong. That's one in itself. You know, you're talking to students that we practice our farm and we start strong and everyone's going to yell back and strong. But at the same time, if we're going to talk about that, last one, best one. So they're training, they're training, they're starting to get tired and you yell last one and they yell back best one. What's our goal? Black belt excellence. So we're working, working, working. I know it's we're getting a little bit tired. Um, some of you guys are, you know, uh, Losing a little of the energy. What's our goal? Everyone goes, black belt, excellent. Black belt, excellent. That's attitude. Black belt, excellence is also technique. So what's our goal? Black belt, excellence. So these calls and responses lead into short talks. And the short talks can be about that personal development. The short talk can be about the moral compass. Um, the short talk could be about having that spirit that you need to complete your tasks and to get a black belt. I love this one. one of them, what are the most three powerful words? Yes, I can. That's a really good one. You can start some techniques. Uh, so you can do some techniques. You're doing drills. Uh, and you say, okay, this is going to be a little more difficult, but I believe in you guys. I believe in you guys. I know you guys can make great black belts. What are the three most powerful words? They go, yes, I can. It's all about attitude, right, guys? So... What are the three most powerful words? Yes, I can. Sometimes you'll have someone do a technique in class and you want to spotlight them or you're going to highlight them. And all of a sudden everyone brings attention to that side and you just go give them two claps. One, two, and they go. <claps> so the response is two claps. What you want to do is give someone a pat on the back. You want to bring out some attention to someone. Uh, you don't want it to go with claps all around. It takes too long to run around the room. High 10, everyone. So you just go two claps. They go boom, boom. So again, they're listening to you. They're focused on you. And if you want to go into a lesson, why are we giving someone two claps? Well, what we want to do when we're doing working with the partners, we want to make sure we inspire our partners. We want to encourage our partners. This is a team. We have teamwork. When the team does good, we celebrate. When one person on the team does good, we celebrate. So doing two claps is a way to celebrate, a way to congratulate, and a way to give someone encouragement. Here's a couple more. This is really good for adults. Lead side, speed side. So now you've got everyone you're doing jab cross, and it's lead side, they all speed side. You're doing front leg roundhouse kicks. Lead side, and everyone goes speed side. 
Uh, after you do the lead side, of course, you want to do the cross. So lead with speed, and everyone yells back, follow with power. Lead with speed, follow with power. So now you're just doing techniques. You're doing a skip round kick, come down with a reverse punch, lead side, speed side. Lead with speed, <laughs> I almost lost that one, right? Lead with speed, follow with power. Um, I love this one. I first heard this with uh, Craig Haley down in uh, Florida. Uh, he wanted the kids to get back on their spots after he did some drills. He goes, smiles on faces, and the kids yell back, butts in our places, and they run back to their spot. So anytime you say butts to kids, you're going to get some type of laughs, but that's okay. The parents are going to smile too. Smile on faces, and again, it's a positive attitude. Smile on faces makes them smile, so they're going to feel better. It changes their attitude. Again, that's part of state management. You know, it's really hard to do something positive and something negative at the same time. Once you say smiles on faces and all the kids smile, they just naturally feel better. It's hard to be grumpy when you got a big smile on your face. And then you lighten up the class and they yell back, butts are in their places. So again, those are all calls and responses. Uh, I have a, a client in England, his name is Sonny Perez. Sonny Perez is a Muay Thai instructor. Uh, his instructors are from Thailand. Very, very serious about training. Um, they got a gym, probably 300 students, most of those adults, maybe 40% women, 60% uh, men. And when I first started telling him about call and responses, he goes, no, nah, that's some type of crazy motivational American thing. And the guys in England, you know, we're a little more um, strict and everything. And I don't think they're going to go with that. And when Sonny got the responses from the guys, the hey, goals we get, you know, that goals was that? It was just like amazing. Um, and he just loved it. And Sonny's probably been working on a different call and response now for three months. Uh, his parents love it. The kids love it. The parents are just amazed at the focus and concentration from the kids because now the kids are listening for some type of response. they got to give back the response. Um, and when you get a bunch of kids like that that are having fun, doing martial arts, getting in shape, and at that same time focused and they're concentrating, that's a beautiful thing to a parent. I mean, that, that's where the value comes in. Now, getting in shape is great. Defending yourself is great. Becoming a better human being because of the way you teach classes, instruct classes, and making sure that they're listening and they're following up. It's the way you really empower people and change their lives. So this is the follow-up. And this, again, is call and responses. Work on them. Um, I can't stress enough about getting tip-top performance. So if you say eyes on who, they yell back, eyes on you. And it's really loud and strong just like that. Um, let me do a couple more because you, you may be doing these, but these are listening positions. A uh, listening position is also a call and response. Listening position, the whole idea is to focus kids' bodies so then they can focus their attention on you. So when I say set, Everyone goes into that, sir, and now they're all standing nice and straight. They're focused, their bodies, their feet are together, their hands are to the side. Uh, they can't punch or push another kid. They can't wave their hands at their, their mom in the window or whatever. Their focused body now enables them to focus their mind and put their eyes on you. Another listening position is probably when you want to talk a little bit longer and you want the kids comfortable. So you will say, take a knee, and they're going to go, take a knee, sir. And when they say, take a knee, sir, everyone drops on the knee. It's really cool if you get everyone to do it the exact same side. So it's right knee down, left knee up. Hands are on top of their left knee. Again, hands are in position. Their body is in position. You have a focused body. So now they can focus their mind once they focus their eyes on you. So it's another call and response. You know, take a knee, take a knee, sir. And all of a sudden they drop on their knee. Uh, we also do lock it up. Um, when we say lock it up, they fall down or not they fall down. Uh, they sit down all at the same time. They've got their legs crossed. They've got one hand on each knee. They've got their back straight. They're looking at you. They're breathing deeply but not loud. And you can actually go with that when you first start teaching uh, someone how to do lock it up. So when you say legs, they're going to go crossed. You go hands, they're going to go on knees, back, straight, chin. Up, eyes, on you like a laser beam. 
So that's how they're going to give you back the call and response for Lock It Up. You're not going to do that all the time, but you're especially going to do it while you're teaching them. Because uh, you want to make sure they can do it strong, they can do it fast, and they're all in the same position. Again, when someone's coming into your school looking for control or self-discipline, they happen to walk in on one of your classes, you go lock it up, and all the kids go, lock it up, sir! And all of a sudden, they drop down in the same position. Again, it's wonderful. It shows so much control, so much self-discipline. And that says so much about how you teach and what you're doing in your school. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, two more to come. I'll send one out next week. Thank you.